Hello, hello, Andrea Majeski here with Dental Well Tutoring. Today is the day where I am um, recording some videos for my students, some lectures on all kinds of topics, and I typically update my topics every three or four months, um, depending on if they need to be updated or not. And anatomy is something that never changes, but it's also something that I feel students need to look at every couple months to really have it hit home. Because even if you look at these anatomy images today, you'll think you'll remember them, but in a couple months you may have forgot one or two or more. So I do like to do a anatomy lecture review every few months or so, and this is exactly what this is. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I'll just be going over images for the most part, but that's how I like to study for anatomy personally. As a student, I didn't even read up on anatomy. I just spent my time studying other topics um, while I was in school, of course, and even for the board exam, all I did to study for anatomy was to look at the images on, you know, um, muscles, um, facial expressions, bones of the skull, you know, head and neck. Um, so that way, if they did ask me a question on the board exam, at least I would have had those images memorized and I would have had a pretty good idea. So that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. Um, I'm putting this into the Dental L lectures area for my students. Um, so to be a Dental L member, you would have full access to all of these different types of lectures. Um, there's literally hundreds of videos. I can't even tell you how many I have, but there's probably hundreds. Um, mock exams, case studies, we tutor every single Sunday live, um, question and answers, every week as well. There's a private um, Facebook group. There's tons, tons and tons and tons. So if you would like to be a Dental L member to have access to everything, um, I will keep the link at the bottom in the comments area. So feel free to have a look. To be a Dental L member, you just need to be a part of either um, the Board Exam Prep Academy or the Dental L student program. So whether you are studying for the board exam or you are a student still in school, for dental hygiene or dental assisting, you could be a member and have full access to everything up to two years if you're studying to take the board exam or up to four years if you're a student. So literally full access to everything. But okay, enough about that. Let's give you guys a little taste of one of the lectures. Now this is probably a more simple one. They're usually more complex than this. This one's only the 17 slides, but let's just talk about it a little bit anyway. So anatomy, bones of the skull, you guys. You guys should all, I feel, should know this anyway. So whether you're prepping for the board exam or not, it's nice to know what all of these are because you'll be talking about them with patients at some point, maybe not all of them. Like you might not mention the vomer ever again, because that's in the middle of the nose here. But things like talking about your nasal area, um, the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, you know, as you're looking at certain lesions, if they have, say, a lesion, let's just say they have a mole, okay, um, under their eye on the temporal bone. You know, it's nice to be able to landmark that mole properly, whereas you could say they have a mole on their cheek. But if you say they have a mole um, inferior to their orbit on the temporal bone closer to the zygomatic area, you know, something like that, it just helps to landmark things a lot easier. So let's just talk about these a little bit, even though I know you guys can all see these. So if you need to review this, please be sure to stop the video um, and review all of this. So the main things I'd say that I talk about with patients would have to be the ramus of the mandible, um, whether I'm talking about their um, uh, TMJ, if they have trouble opening, closing, if I'm doing the intraoral and extraoral exam, um, I do mention the ramus of the mandible. I mention the body of the mandible. When I'm showing x-rays, if I, if I happen to point out the mental um, foramen, which you can see in some, in some x-rays for some patients, they always think, oh, well, I've never heard of that. Like, uh, what is that? You know, it's just a neat thing to talk about, as silly as it sounds, but it does just help to pass the time and it makes you look super smart. 
when the dentist comes in and hears you talking about the mental foramen, right? Because not, not everybody talks about that. Um, I probably talk about, of course, um, the mandible, the maxilla, um, you know, like you guys can all read these, of course, but this slide's excellent. It shows you a little bit of everything. So please make sure to review that one. And let's show you guys from the side. So all of the same things, I mean, not all of the same things, because obviously this one's more intense, but these are kind of the main ones off to the side. So remember how I talked about the temporal bone and the zygomatic. So the temporal bone attaches, of course, to the zygomatic, or another way to think about it is the zygomatic attaches to the temporal. Um, so your cheekbone is the zygomatic portion. The temporal is the back part of that closer to your skull, so the temporal bone. So um, a patient might tell you that they get a lot of um, migraines or tension headaches around here. So then you can tell them, well, that's around your um, temporal area. The occipital is at the back of the head. The parietal covers up the largest portion of the skull. The frontal is your forehead area. The sphenoid, people often forget about this one here, but that's just kind of attaching a lot of them. So it's at the side of the head too, closer to the orbit, but not quite as close as the um, zygomatic area. So don't forget about your um, sphenoid bone here. Next one. So again, I'm just sort of, I'm showing you guys a couple different images because everybody studies in their own way. So feel free to stop the video if you need to focus on one more than the other. This one's pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. So I'm just going to kind of move along from that. So the palate, I love to talk about the palate and I love to mention it to patients too. Now, while you're doing the intraoral exam, one thing to always look at is the incisive um, foramen area. So this could be swollen, it could be red, it could be inflamed. Um, the tissue, of course, which you can't see because I'm just mainly showing you guys underneath that portion, but it could be red, it could be inflamed. If the patient ate anything too hot, crunchy, it could even be sore. Um, I've had a lot of patients come before with a, a toothache, they thought, and they're pointing to the incisive uh, foramen area. And I tell them, well, the good news is that that's really simple. You just probably ate something too hard or too crunchy. It's quite inflamed today. So yes, I can see that it hurts. You can't really do anything about it. Um, it, it usually takes a day or two to heal. So that's the good news, I suppose. But the bad news is, is you came all the way to the dentist to look at something that was pretty simple, right? So a lot of people will point to that area and say that they're sore. So pay attention though also to the intermaxillary suture, but then you, you also have the interpalatine. So these are not the same thing. They're both, I guess, in the midline, but the intermaxillary is closer to the front portion of the mouth, whereas the interpalatine is closer to the soft palate. So that's kind of an easier way to think about it is the intermaxillary is on the hard palate, which is up here, this larger area, and the soft palate is closer to down here. So you have the intermaxillary suture, which is in the midline, and the interpalatine, which is closer to the soft palate. So if you would like to think about it that way. So again, um, feel free to stop the video if you need to look at this one a little bit further. And this one's very similar to the first image that I showed you, but just not as many things happening. So I wanted to point out this one is two. Um, the ethmoid, a lot of people forget about the ethmoid. So this is inside your orbital area off to the side, almost at the nose. So it's not quite at the nose. The lacrimal is more anterior to the ethmoid. So that one's even closer to the nose. So a lot of people tend to get confused with the ethmoid and the lacrimal. When they're being asked about it on a test, or on the board exam. So just remember the ethmoid is closer to the orbit. The lacrimal, like they're in the same areas, but the lacrimal bone um, is closer to the nasal area. So if that helps you guys out a little bit, 
And if you guys are studying for the board exam, they always love to ask about the inferior nas um, nasal concha. I don't know why, because, you know, it's in the nose. Who cares? We're mainly focused on the teeth. But anyways, they love to ask about that. So just know it's right in the nose. Um, you would have the inferior nasal concha, but then up above, you have the middle as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. So lots of things to always keep in mind. There's little things here and there, but um, I like this image too because it shows a little bit of everything, but not too much. And the back, don't forget to study the sutures, everybody, okay? Please, please, please don't forget to study the sutures. So you have the sagittal suture here right in the middle, the coronal suture here, the lamboid is, is more off to the side. So there's, lo there's um, lots of different sutures and they look at the different skulls of the bones as well. So we've talked about most of the bones, but this just kind of shows it looking at the back part. So please make sure to look at that as well. And the side again, so just a different type of image, all the same things, but if you guys have any questions, just feel free to let me know. Now let's talk about the muscles. So I just kind of highlighted some of the more common muscles that you might be talking about or having to study. So around the lips, the obicularis oris. Now, I think that the muscles were actually hard, harder for me to memorize just because of the weird names that the muscles have. So that's why I've just made things a little bit easier for you guys. I've pointed out the main ones, and then there are a few slides that have a little bit of all of them specific to the head and neck though. Okay, um, this is another one too. So this is the cheekbone, right? Or sorry, the cheek muscle. So not the cheekbone, the cheek muscle. And remember how we talked about the one around the lips right there. And then there's this one here. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce them for you guys since you guys can see them, right? And you'll just be laughing too hard. The levator anguli, the obicularis oris. Oh my goodness, just hard to say ones, right? These are all hard to say. But these ones are some of the more common ones. So feel free to stop the video if you guys need to study that further. But you know, this lecture is more of an easier one. So that's why I'm not explaining every little detail because it's in the image right here. But please, please let me know if you guys have any questions. So I like both of these images here. They're kind of showing the same things, but in a different way. I find this one easier to study from. I don't know why, but it's clearly showing where the muscles are and what happens. That's all. Uh, where are we here? And again, um, just kind of showing one of the main muscles here. I like this one too, because it shows again, a little bit of everything. Now this isn't all in English though, is it? Like this one, the Inneraris Angula Band, no clue what that is, but some of them though, you would know, like the depressor one, that one's fine. Uh, the Zyg Gomaticus minor. So some of these, yes, you would recognize, but some of them clearly aren't in the right language. So feel free to skip this slide if you want, but there's still some good ones on here, so I'm not going to take it out. Okay, so this one shows it more clearly. These are the main ones, I'd say, for this part. So even if you're studying for the board exam, for the muscles, if this is the only image you decide to study for the muscles, I feel that you would be fine. Plus one more that I'll just kind of show you guys right now. You guys need to remember what this one is, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the long one of the neck. They love to ask about it. And the trapezius muscle, the one like the neck and back and like upper like shoulder, sorry. So not the back, but the neck and the upper shoulder area. They love to ask about that one too. And I just kind of showed you guys another one here. So this is just showing a little bit more. It's a good one to review as well. So yeah, you guys, so that one was kind of easy. So maybe not the best example to show you guys of our lectures, because that was the easiest one that we've ever had. Typically, we spend some more time and I explain everything for you. But this is just me being honest and saying for anatomy, you don't have to study every little thing unless of, um, unless of course you're in school 
and your tests are on every little thing. That's one thing. But if you're studying for the board exam, just keep it simple. You have a lot of other things that you have to study for. So keep it simple and memorize these images. Yes, there are a lot, but it would still take you a lot less time than if you had to go through the textbook and read every little thing. So I'll let you guys look at all of that. Let me know of any questions. And as I mentioned before, if you would like to become a member of um, Dental L to have full access to all of these lectures, I've been literally uploading three a week, sometimes more, and even inside there now, you would have full access to everything. Um, the modules, the mock exams, the case studies that are, are all there now, and all of our um, live lectures that we did every Sunday from in 2017, they were, they were every Sunday, and in 2016, we were only doing them twice a month, but that's still a ton. So you have full, full access to all of those anyway, because yes, 2016 was a couple years ago, but honestly, it's a great place to get started if you're thinking, I don't want to read the textbook anymore. I just would like to listen to you speak and teach me. So I'll leave the link in the comments area. If you guys would like to sign up, please um, feel free to ask me any questions. And I look forward to teaching all of you soon. Thank you so much for watching.